In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And my brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast day of St. Leo the Great, Pope who lived in the 5th century, who has much to offer us as far as advice and the way to live out these days today in our country. So as we pray this Mass, let us offer our sins, that we may truly not be swayed by the errors of our age. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of St. Pope Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of, your, of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanders, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men similarly to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. 
the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the apostles, Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat. Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what he was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate a truly great saint, in fact, a doctor of the church, St. Leo the Great, who lived in the 5th century. St. Leo's time was really not that much different than our own. Realize in the 5th century you had the Roman Empire in great, great decline. In fact, if it wasn't for Leo, it would have ended in his lifetime. It ended after him, of course. But the things he fought against are not unlike the things that are going on with us today. In fact, you can look at Leo and see a couple of major themes in his pontificate. The first was, was of doctrine in the church herself. You see, there were a number of heresies going on back then, which frankly have not died because you could never really kill a good heresy. The first was Pelagianism. Pelagianism basically says that we earn God's grace and that we're left up to our own devices, whatever we do is God's will. Of course, this is not true. But then you also had the opposite extreme back then, which was Manichaeanism, which basically said, any of the flesh, anything that's physical is bad, that the goal of faith is to escape the body. And you actually had these two extremes at the same time. Even in our day-to-day, we kind of have these extremes where there's a lot of people who claim to be Catholic, and they make the faith whatever they want it to be. Whatever they think is good is what Jesus taught. Whatever is politically convenient to them seems to be Jesus' gospel gold standard teaching. This is pretty much Pelagianism. We don't need to worship God. We don't need to follow the Ten Commandments as taught. We can reinterpret them and modernize them because we're so civilly advanced these days. Notice my sarcasm. But you also have the Manichaeanism, which is basically in anything in the flesh is bad, where you have a lot of people out of holiness saying that they are escaping human love and forms of expression of human love, that marriage is bad, that if we're going to really be dedicated to God, we need to live, if you will, in our own bubble, and we should not be involved with other people. We should create our own Catholic islands and just let everyone else burn. This also is not a helpful thing. So what Pope Leo did is he called uh, the Council of Chalcedon, which was the fourth ecumenical council in the church in 451. And in the Council of Chalcedon, one of the big declarations of dogma is, is that Jesus is fully God and fully man. He's fully God and fully man, which for us today seems to be catechism and everything. But back then, this was very much in question. And the reason why this is so important is because you can't, follow the extremes, meaning it's all on us or we need to escape everything in order to be holy. It really sees Jesus as Lord and recognizing Jesus' divine person, both fully God and fully man, we see the way the gospel is called to transform us and the way we're called to imitate Christ, especially on the cross, because those who try to save their lives will lose it and those who lose their lives for his sake truly find it, that we are truly made in a sense, to find ourselves by losing ourselves Christ-like for the sake of others. Another thing Pope Leo did was save culture. 
Uh, at this time, you had Attila the Hun coming and knocking on Rome's doors. He had conquered most of Europe at this point. He was a barbarian, of course. And he was very much motivated by pure emotion and not reason. He was motivated by the lust of power. And the culture that he was promulgating was not one of reason and thought and tradition and law, but one of might makes right. And whoever is angrier is the one that we should follow. And of course, no one could contest with Attila, except St. Leo the Great, who actually rode out and met him before he got to Rome. And Attila turned course and left. And when asked by one of his generals why Attila the Hun did not kill Leo on the spot, he said, because I was really afraid of this guy dressed as a priest with a big sword. I think I thought he was going to kill me. There was no one with Leo when he met with Attila the Hun. And here's the amazing thing, because Leo represents all of church teaching, if you will, of reason and faith and principle and discipline and the Ten Commandments. And Attila the Hun was the opposite. And look at how God used Pope Leo the Great. He wrote out Attila the Hun, really didn't care what Leo was saying. All he cared was this angel next to Leo with the big sword. And that's what convinced Attila the Hun to turn course. The other thing that Leo did in his pontificate, which was so important, was to really help people to understand the primacy of the church in our lives, the primacy of the Pope, the importance of us being obedient to the teachings of the church, us living the apostolic faith handed on to us by Peter and his successors, and to really see the church as our mother, and to see the unity of the church as one of the most important things if we are to really live the Catholic faith in our age. But you look at everything going on in our country these days and in our world, and frankly, they're not much different than the 5th century when the Roman Empire was in decay. And I think that's why it's very important for us, especially us as men in the Knights of Columbus, that we maybe really pick up and research St. Leo the Great a little bit and read his writings, read what he said, read what he has left to us, and see the example that he has shown us of how to live in these trying times. When people proclaim there is no truth, there is no need for God, there is no need for faith. That might makes right. That emotion is more important than reason. And what we want to do today is more important than tradition. I think we need to be very careful and we need to be well grounded. And thank God we have doctors of the church like Pope St. Leo the Great to really guide us and show us. And the best part of all of this is he's not the only one. As we come to celebrate this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church, especially our catechists. We pray that the church may continue to show and have great leadership in our world, protecting our culture and protecting the tradition that we have been entrusted by Christ himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them. Pray for those suffering from the effects of the coronavirus. We pray that in these sufferings we may truly come to encounter Christ in more authentic ways in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that we may truly desire a greater holiness as Christ has modeled to us and that through the church and our unity we may support one another as we continue to defend those that are most precious, the teachings and others' lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers, and we ask that we continue to be seen as worthy of being entrusted with carrying out your will and your message in this world. Help us be obedient to you, that we may be faithful, and help all come to know the peace, the joy, and the love that we have all been made for. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the offerings made here, we pray, O Lord, gracious shed light on your church, so that your flock may everywhere prosper, and under your governance the shepherds may become pleasing to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By the way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, with with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, He himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Leo the Great, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops are the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we restore on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to govern the church you have nourished by this holy meal, so that firmly directed she may enjoy ever greater freedom and persevere in integrity of religion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as for the nights here, I'm happy to celebrate Mass to you guys. Any Monday you have a meeting, just let me know when and where with time, and I'd be happy to make that happen. God bless all of you.